Yeah, I just want to be the greatest. It's your boy High Five Vega, and today I'm here to talk about the top five sub amps you can get for under $500, and it's going to be with an SQ focus. So I will do another video with an SPL based focus in the near future, but today we're talking about the top five sub amps under $500 I'd pick for a quote unquote SQ type system. If you have a few suggestions or amps that I missed under this $500 mark, leave them in the comments below. I definitely want to know what your picks would be for an SQ based sub amp under $500. I think it's time to just go ahead and jump in to my number five pick. Number five. Coming in at $479, my number five pick is the Audison AP1D. It is rated 310 watts at four ohms mono, 540 watts at two ohms mono. And if you know anything about Audison, you know that they make some really high quality and sound quality focus products. So this definitely deserves a spot on the list. We do have a few notable features in the specs, so let's go over that real quick. The first thing is this is capable of handling seven and a half volts all the way to 15 volts. That low voltage protection is really great. This is something you're definitely not gonna see in cheaper amps. It's nice to have this, you know, so if you drop below 12 volts down to 10 or 11 volts, you're not gonna blow your amp. Another thing of note is this only has a 30 amp fuse. I'd be really interested to get this on the test bench and see if it does the 540 watts. I couldn't find any dynos of this particular amp. So uh, this is one I'd love to get on the bench. That being said, I know that these amps are high quality amps and they all sound good. So no question that this is gonna sound good for your SQ sub amp. Number four. Number four on my list is the Audio Control LC1.800. This is an absolutely beautiful amp with lots of features and a huge bang for the buck as far as sound quality goes, in my opinion. This amp comes in at $449. It is rated 500 watts by one at four ohms mono and 800 watts by one at two ohms mono. This amp has a ton of features, so let's go over those real quick. One of the big features that Audio Control is known for is AccuBase, and this will help you correct that you know, factory roll off of bass if you're just going line level. One of the features that I like the most is the MILC, that is Maximum Input Level Control, and it's a LED system that tells you when you've got optimized sound. So basically it's a DD1 built right into amplifier. That's a very cool feature. I think every amp should have this. One other feature this has is GTO, which is great turn on. So if you're using a speaker level input, this can turn on without having a remote wire. And that also gives you a remote wire out for another amp. One of the things that held this amp back from getting into that number three spot is the lack of an occluded bass knob. You can get a bass knob for this, but it is an add-on feature and it's kind of a plain Jane bass knob. So that held it back from getting that number three spot. This is a solid 800 watt amp for your sound quality system. I think you would be very, very happy with it. So uh, let's go on to my number three pick. Number three. For my number three pick, it's going to be the Kicker KXA800.1. You guys know I love Kicker, but there are a few features that I think puts this just ahead of the audio control amp. So let's talk about price, let's talk about power, and then we'll jump into the features. This amp comes in at $399. That's one reason why I jumped above the audio control. It is rated 400 watts by one at four ohms mono and 800 watts by one at two ohms. This amp also has a bunch of great features, one of them being Shockwave, which is essentially Kicker's version of the audio control AccuBase, so you can correct that bass roll off if you're going line level in and uh, you don't want to use some kind of line output converter. Another very cool thing is the clip indicator. This also has a DD1 built in much like the audio control, but the coolest thing about it is it is inside the gain knob. So the gain knob has a light as you turn it up. When you get to clipping, it will light up red. Very cool feature. This is something that most people don't know about and it's just very, very cool in my opinion. There's a couple more features that this has that are comparable to what the audio control does. This can be signal sense, just like the audio control with speaker level inputs. On top of that, this has a DC offset turn on, which is another way you can have this amp turn on and 
use the remote out from this to another amplifier. Another feature that this has over the audio control is the kick EQ, so you can adjust the width of the filter on the sub channel, and I think that's a very cool feature. Not a lot of people are gonna use it, but the people that do use it will be very appreciative of it. Also, this amp comes with a bass knob, and not only does it come with a bass knob, it comes with a wireless bass knob. So cool. It's got a lot of features in the bass knob. You can control the kick EQ from the bass knob, so that's a cool feature. And just being wireless, that's very innovative in my opinion. And if I were picking my number one amp, sub amp, for uh, the SQ setup, I believe that this amp might be it just because the features it has. And on top of that, if you go to Amazon right now, I will also leave a link to the Kicker KXA 1200.1 Hi-Fi Sound Connection has them refurbed for $389. So you can actually get the refurbished 1200 watt cheaper than the brand new um, 800.1, but you won't get a warranty equal to the new manufacturer's warranty. But hey, if you wanna take that chance, that's on you, and I think it's a fantastic deal uh, on either one of them. Now, let's jump into my number two pick. Number two. For my number two pick, we're getting into some serious sound quality territory, and it is the Arc Audio X2 650.1. It is rated 165 watts by one at four ohms, 350 watts by one at two ohms, and 650 watts by one at one ohms. If you know anything about Arc Audio, you know that these guys are really out there doing well in the competitions. They have some fantastic products that definitely keep the SQ enthusiast and competitor in mind. So a few cool features on this amp is it is very small, it is stackable, and you can strap it. So you can strap two of these together and get 1100 watts at four ohms mono. That's a pretty good solid chunk of little bitty amp if you ask me so outside of that there's not much to say about this amp besides it is a clean sound quality focused little amp it's got a nice cosmetic look integrates into your system very easily if you've been to many competitions you have seen a lot of arc audio amps and i think that the reason why is because they sound good they're easy to use they're small they're easy to integrate and uh, that's why this got the number two pick with that being said, let's go ahead and go to my number one pick and uh, we'll see what you think about that. Number one. So we're here, my number one pick is gonna be the Gladen RS150.2. If you know Gladen, you know Moscone, they're affiliated, they're one in the same, fantastic product. One of my favorite sounding amps of all time is a Moscone amp, they're fantastic. So let's jump into the features of this one and you can buy this amp with the affiliate link below at $419 and I think that's an awesome value. It doesn't do a lot of power, we're gonna get into that, but for what you get, this thing is an absolutely beautiful amp. It's fan cooled. It's just a piece of art in my opinion as far as the looks and the sound of it. Okay, so this is a two channel amp. It's rated 150 watts by two at four ohm stereo. 230 watts by two at two ohms stereo and then it is rated 460 watts by one at four ohms mono if you know moscone they're a bit underrated so you're going to get a little more power than what this says you're going to get every time it has a 50 amp fuse this can handle a voltage as low as 10 volts and as high as 16 volts so you got a nice broad range to work in it's nice to have that low voltage protection uh, so you don't fry your amp. Outside of that, the pick is simple to me. It's pure sound quality. You're not getting a lot of features. If you want features, I would suggest you go with either the Audio Control 800.1 or the Kicker KX 800.1 because you're gonna get more features for your money in both those amps. But if you want just pure sound quality without the bells and whistles, you already have your DSP and all that figured out, this is the number one pick. Let me know your picks in the comment below. Like I said before, I wanna hear all your picks. What did I miss? What should have made it on this list? Are there some hidden gems that people might consider SPL amps that could be included on this list? All right, that is my top five sound quality amps under $500. If you like content like this and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell so you get notifications when my videos pop. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate you greatly. And uh, if you want to, drop a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking about this list. 
or anything else, I appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time to watch these videos. You guys are the greatest, and uh, I think I will just have to catch you guys on the next video. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, but a special shout out goes to the six star or more members, 2001 Monolithic, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, El Fuego, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, Boxboy Audio Sound Solution, Jesus Tires, Orion the Great, Dennis Cromwell Jr., Scott Dilbeck, D. Stewart, Aaron Waltz, David Koslick, Scott McCord, and Matthew Tully. For as little $2 a month, you can join the team and help me reach my goal of $200 a month so I can do an exclusive Patreon-only monthly podcast for every tier from $2 all the way up. I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to my pitch. And if you want to support, check me out at patreon.com slash high5vega. Yo, since you stuck around, I'm gonna give you an honorable mention, and it is the Audio Dynamics ADMP500.1. It's a small little 500 watt amp, but I'm gonna go over some of the features that I think makes it worth its $429 price tag. This amplifier has a few really killer features, in my opinion, that make it an honorable mention on this list. One of them is the 41 click in place frequencies, so you know that you're getting the frequency that you want as you click it in place. That's a feature that I think every amp should have. Genius idea, in my opinion. Another thing is this has high pass, low pass, and band pass filter for a sub. That's very cool. Instead of using a subsonic filter, you can just use a band pass and not have to worry about dropping into the 15 hertz range or up into the 80 hertz range, whatever you want it to be. Now the killer feature on this amp is the APEC circuit. And what this does is it allows you to run the amp without the worry of clipping it. And I'm just gonna read off the website what it says about the APEC circuit because it explains it much better than I could. It says this prevents the amplifier from signal overload, which prevents the massive increase in current and heat that is typical in conventional amplifiers. APEC allows the amplifier to use more of its rated power on average when compared to conventional amplifiers that only use 20% when, when tuned correctly. APEC amplifiers can easily compare to higher power conventional amplifiers when used on subwoofers. Users can either tune an APEC amplifier for maximum dynamics or tune it hot for constant ground pounding clean bass. And that's another feature that I think a lot of high-end amps should consider. So that's why this gets an honorable mention. It almost made it into the top five. Yeah, I'm glad you stuck around and got to check out my honorable mention. I'll catch you true OGs, the people who stick around to the end in the next video.